Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome to episode number one of the Denver Broncos franchise here on Man NFL 23. It is so good to say that phrase and be back here with some sports content on the channel. Kicking it off with a huge Madden series that we have in store for you guys. I hope you guys are excited. If you are just checking out the channel for the first time, I really appreciate you and I'm so glad you are here and you're going to be along the ride for us. If you would though, just make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below using the instructions you see on the screen right now, especially if you want more franchise content, especially if you want this series to grow and just get even better bigger and bigger but in case you didn't see the team reveal last week i am using the denver broncos they are the team we will be using for this year i think they have a very good blend of just some talent but at the same time where are they really in such a stacked division you can see the ratings on the screen 79 overall 80 on overall on offense and 79 on defense so let's go ahead and kick this underway picking the denver broncos now coach Nathaniel Haggett. Usually what I do is I always do owner mode, and I know in real life the Denver Broncos did just have an ownership change with the guy from Walmart, but I'm actually not going to do that. I'm actually going to have a different owner, and we're just going to go with former player John Elway. John Elway will say has stepped up the corporate ladder, and he has officially bought the Denver Broncos, because I also want to use some of the perks and the positives and negatives that come along with being a former football player so that is who we're using and let's go ahead and jump in and get into our franchise all right we are here inside of a franchise as you can see and i do want to make one little comment i do love the new franchise interface it just looks so clean looks more organized i know it's not a huge change but at the same time it does look a lot better so we are the denver broncos i did simulate the preseason so we can just jump right in to the regular season let's go ahead and meet the team that's what we're going to do this episode we're going to meet the roster and see what we're working with going into another nfl season here's a look at the broncos roster looking at some of the top players but we're going to start going position by position and of course we have to start with none other and quarterback Russell Wilson, the new man on the block, the former Seahawk, who the Denver Broncos gave up a fortune to get as their starting quarterback, 33 years of age, still wants to show that he has a lot left in the tank, still a top five or top 10 quarterback in the league. He is coming off the season where he did miss his first ever games. He missed two games last year with an injury, but Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks were going to a divorce and it ended up with the Denver Broncos finally getting a quarterback they feel confident with behind center. The circle, the rotunda circle has finally ended with the Denver Broncos quarterback room and it is going to be Russell Wilson's going forward. Nothing much else to say, but Big Russ is here trying to show that he is not washed, that he is ready for another season. Halfbacks, we got a very interesting group of halfbacks. Top running back, it looks like on the depth chart, is Melvin Gordon the third who had rushed for 918 yards last year and eight touchdowns. He's still a very formidable back, solid starting caliber running back. But this is not going to be a one in running back kind of team. This is going to be a two-headed monster because right behind him is the second-year man out of North Carolina, Javante Williams, who had a phenomenal rookie season, has star development. I mean, he is going to be the running back of the future, but for now he will split time with Melvin Gordon. Rushed for 903 yards last year as a rookie and had seven total touchdowns. So he can catch the football as well. He's not just a running back. His stats don't necessarily show it. Probably is a little higher, but nonetheless, Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon are going to hold it down in the backfield. We also have Damaria Crockett as a backup halfback. Going back to quarterbacks, we also have Brett Ripien as a backup, as well as a longtime 36-year-old vet, Josh Johnson is the third-string quarterback. Fullback, there is Andrew Beck on roster. Not entirely sure how much longer he'll be on. I don't really carry a fullback on my teams. Wide receiver. So, interesting wide receiver group. We have Cortland Sutton leading off the 26-year-old 85 overall Denver Broncos receiver who is on the books for quite a little bit. I think he's going to be making $20 million for the next couple of seasons locked up through 2025. And he's a very good receiver. He's a starting caliber receiver. But I'm not sure if he is necessarily a number one receiver. Last year he had 776 yards and two touchdowns. And he did have a 1,000-yard campaign just a couple of years ago. But he's kind of had a hard time as well staying healthy 
throughout his career. As you can say, last year he did play all games, but he missed one there. So I guess he's not necessarily injury prone, but he is getting older in age. And like I said, his contract, I mean, he's on the books for quite a little bit after this year. So he will see a huge bump in salary and cap hit. So something to keep an eye on. Is Cortland Sutton really worth that money? We'll have to wait and see. Behind him is Jerry Judy as well, a wide receiver out of Alabama who had a very down sophomore campaign, looked pretty good as a rookie, only played in 10 games last year. Somebody we hope that can still develop. He's still very young. He's still a quality receiver at only 23 years of age. He had 800 yards as a rookie. Didn't find the end zone last year, so definitely went through a sophomore slump. We're hoping that Jerry Judy, though, can take the next step in his career and contribute to the wide receiver core. Behind him, we have Tim Patrick in the third wide receiver role. More of a deep threat receiver, another quality receiver. But I do feel like this wide receiver room is just missing maybe that just bona fide top star. I think Sutton, Judy, and Patrick are very good wide receivers. We'll have to see if they can handle the load, though. There is KJ Hamler right behind in him, though. Who KJ Hamler is a nice, solid, depth wide receiver. And then you got behind him Montrell Washington, the rookie out of Samford, and then Seth Williams, the second year man out of Auburn, who I actually used to like when he was at Auburn. Tight end, Big Albert Aquing Boonham. Sorry, I definitely butchered his name, but the young, high potential tight end for Missouri Tiger, who has limitless of potential with that 88 overall, has yet to realize it, but with Madden, I have a feeling he could be a big part. He's just so raw. He can catch the football. He's just not very good at running routes, but utilizing that speed, just being able to harness that 88 speed at the tight end position, I'm hoping Big A gets a big breakout year. Behind him, we got Greg Ducich when we go two tight ends, as well as Eric Saubert. Left tackle, Garrett Bowles. The veteran left tackle has just been an anchor on that side a long time. Denver Bronco, still a top talented left tackle who very happy to have at Russell Wilson's blind side. On left guard spot, Dalton Reisner, a solid piece as well. Star Dev, 27 years of age, top 10 left guard. So we have a very solid left side of our offensive line. Center, though, this is where the offensive line starts to take a little bit of a turn for the worse. Lloyd Cushenberry is at center. He does have star dev, but he is still very raw. 72 overall, 24th best line or center in the NFL. Much better in the power scheme of things. Not a very good finesse blocker in both aspects. Then you get a right guard. You got 30-year-old Graham Glasgow, who is getting older up there in age. Definitely not going to be the long-term piece of right guard, but he's probably a solid fit for right now. And then a right tackle, Billy Turner, 30 years of age, 72 overall. He was the starting to tackle over there. Definitely weaker on the right side of the line than we are on the left, but a solid, formidable line nonetheless. I think Russell Wilson will be a little bit happier here in Denver with his line than he was in Seattle. Going over to the defensive side of the football, we run a 3-4 here in Denver. Left end will be Draymond Jones, a 25-year-old former Ohio State Buckeye who has starred Dev. Hasn't really hit that star dev. I would say I'm actually very surprised that he has star dev, but Draymond Jones, we're glad to see it. Maybe he can finally start to have a breakout season as he is getting geared towards a potential free agency market. So this could be a contract year for Draymond Jones when he breaks out. Matt Hennigansen behind the rookie out of Wisconsin. On the right end spot, McTelvin Aguim. This is where we go a little bit worse. 76 or 77 67 excuse me overall gonna maybe need an upgrade there a defensive line not as strong as we are on the offensive line side of things dj jones solid d tackle though as well sitting there in the middle and then we have mike purcell behind him gonna need to upgrade this at some point left outside linebacker bradley chubb probably the key to this football team you know, Bradley Chubb, a very solid player, but ever since he had a very good rookie season, Bradley Chubb has not been the same player. Had 10 sacks as a rookie, and then ever since then, he had zero sacks last year. Yes, he was injured, but, you know, we want to see Bradley Chubb going the other direction, not necessarily on the decline, and it is a contract year, so it's a huge year for Bradley Chubb. He's probably still going to want money. He will get paid. It's just, is he going to get paid by the Denver Broncos? Nick Bonito, the rookie out of Oklahoma, and Jonathan Cooper are behind him. At middle linebacker, Josie Jewell is right there in the middle, long time at Denver Bronco. More of a run-stopping middle linebacker, however, so not necessarily sure how good he'll be in nickel and sub-packages. Then we have Alex Singleton as well out of Montana State. 
and then Jonas Griffin behind him. So need a little bit of help here in the middle of the linebacker core. That right outside linebacker, Randy Gregory, the former Cowboy, the big signing this offseason for the Denver Broncos. Signed a five-year, $70 million contract. Had a career-high six sacks last year in 12 games. You cannot deny the talent that Randy Gregory has when he's on the field. He's had a lot of trouble in his career with injuries and suspensions. So we're hoping those monsters don't come back to bite him. But when he's on the field, he can be a very good football player. Malik Reed is behind him, a nice solid depth piece as well, as well as Baron Browning, the second year man of Ohio State, who I'm actually pretty high on. I hope Baron Browning can start to have a good career here in Denver. And the cornerback room, led by superstar corner Patrick Sertain, the second year man out of Alabama, who had a very strong rookie season. I expect him to be a lockdown corner on that side of the field. A very high hopes for his future. Very impressed with Sertan. I'm glad to have him on the field. I've always liked him. He's you know 6'2". He's got that long size. Can keep up with the 93 speed. Lockdown corner number one. Behind him, we have also good corners. So it's not just Patrick Sertan. Ronald Darby, 78 overall, 28 years of age. Another solid piece on the other side of the field. Very good number two, I would say. And then behind him, we have K1 Williams, who's pretty decent as well. So I think we have a solid three-man corner room right now. And then Michael Ojemudia when we need him, and Demari Mathis. Free safety, the best player on this team, Justin Simmons. So glad that Denver decided to pay him a year ago. He's definitely worth it. Top three free safety. Tied a career high with five interceptions just a year ago. He's a ball hawk defender. A great center field safety. Behind him, you got Caden Stearns as well as DeLaren Turner Yell. And that strong safety, Kareem Jackson, the former cornerback at 34 years of age, still kicking, trying to show that he is a top football player. Not entirely sure how long he'll be around in the series, but a phenomenal cover safety considering he used to be a corner. And if need be, I think he could still fill that corner spot, specifically in the slot if we need to be. So Kareem Jackson, very happy to have him. Even at age 34, Jamar Johnson is the backup strong safety. And at kicker, you got Brandon McManus. And puncher, you got Sam Martin. So that is the team. The one thing, though, we did do all that trading to get Russell Wilson. So our picks, we don't have a lot of picks going into this draft. So this is going to be the interesting thing. After this year, you know, if we don't play good this season, we only have two threes, a four, a five, and a seven. So not very good in a draft pick. So something to keep an eye on maybe as the season starts to unfold. That is a look at your Denver Broncos as we get ready for week one. The first game of the season, we are traveling to Seattle Lumen Field for the Seattle Russell Wilson Revenge Game. Of course, you can't ride it any better. First game of the season, Monday Night Football as well as we take on the Seattle Seahawks, who are, a lot of people are saying, not going to have a good season, probably in rebuilding phase, but they still got a lot of key pieces. You know, the former Bronco, Drew Locke, is their quarterback. So, revenge game on both sides of the football, Chris Carson as well. Pretty good wide receiver core, though. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, and T.Y. Hilton. So we're actually going to be tested. Our cornerback room will be tested off the rip. Former Bronco, Noah Fant at tight end. Charles Cross, though, who is hurt. So that's a big blow for Seattle. So their offensive line already is a little weaker. Left guard, Quentin Spain going down. You can just see offensive line not as strong. Defense, Shelby Harris, another former Bronco who we'll see. Puna Ford there as well. Al Woods at the middle. And then on the linebacker court, Uchenna Nwosu. Middle linebacker, Jordan Brooks and Cody Barton. No Wagner as well. So this is a team that looks way different than they used to. Sidney Jones, Justin Coleman are their top corners. And you got Quandre Diggs. But you do got to watch out for the strong safety, Jamal Adams. Still a superstar player. And they have all of our draft picks, which, you know, that's good for them. But that's going to be coming to you guys next episode. Week one will be tomorrow. We're going to kick this episode off on a Saturday. Not usually give Saturday uploads, but I do want to get this series up and rolling. I'm excited for it. Hope you guys are as well. Hope you guys enjoyed and you're ready. If you are, make sure you drop a like and you subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. As this is Mr. Rob, and I'll see you in the next one.